Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome to the immunology lectures and uh, today we will start with one of the very important uh, effector systems in the immune, immune system. We call it the complement system. So the complement system is uh, one of the major effector systems of the humoral branch of immunity. By now you have known what uh, humoral immunity means, uh, what is the how the innate system and the adaptive system they work together. So, uh, the humoral immunity which is primarily the B cell uh, based immunity and which is mostly mediated by the antibodies. Now, what do these antibodies do? We told in our classes in humoral immunity that these antibodies can do many functions like neutralization, uh, opsonization, but how were these functions mediated? So, one of the very important effector system of the humoral branch of immunity is the complement system. The complement system although it looks a bit may be a bit complicated, but actually uh, I, will, I will try to explain it very uh, clearly and lucidly to you, so that you get a uh, uh, idea how these complement proteins they act as uh, part of this effector system and they actually kill the pathogen or they uh, do many other functions, they can also um, elicit uh, inflammatory responses. So, how was this complement system uh, discovered and what exactly the role of the complement system is? So, although the complement system as I told is the major effector system for the humoral branch of immunity there can be complement systems or complement activation which does not depend on the antigen antibody reaction. So, a branch of complement activation starts from the interaction between the antigen and the antibody. So, when there is an antigen antibody interaction there is a complement activation as well as there are antibody independent complement activation pathways. Before we come to these pathways or describe these pathways, we first try to understand or try to know what these complement proteins are and how they work and what they do actually. So, the discovery of the complement proteins and as you can understand the name that it complements something, that means it completes some incomplete job. Now, what does it complement for? So, Back in uh, like 1890s, there was a very interesting discovery from uh, a very talented scientist, uh, Julie uh, Bordet. So, what he found was that he took the anti serum, you know what the anti serum means. So, the anti serum contains the antibodies. So, he took the anti serum from a uh, fibrio cholery infected person. So, took the anti serum and using that anti serum, he applied that anti serum on the bacterium. And when the anti serum was applied or given on the bacterium, he found that the bacteria was eliminated, that means it was dying. So, the bacteria was killed. So, now definitely the anti serum contains something which is able to kill that bacterium and that something is probably the antibodies. So, of course, the anti serum means it contains the antibody to that pathogen 
but now what he did was so he heated that anti serum he heated it raised the temperature tried to denature the protein components inside so if you heat it the anti serum there will be denaturation of the protein components so it was denatured and used that anti serum against the bacterium he found as expected that the heated anti serum was clearly not able to clear that infection or kill the pathogen kill the bacteria now what he did was he took another fresh serum he took some fresh serum not the anti serum remember so it was not the anti serum the anti serum was heat inactivated so it was uh, heated and uh, uh, supposed to be inactivated and it does not work against the bacterium now he took some fresh serum and added to that heat inactivated anti serum and he found that the fresh serum is expected not to contain any antibodies and because antibody is present only in the anti serum so the fresh uh, serum that he took does not contain any antibodies so it is not expected to work on the pathogen so now he found that when he added this fresh serum it again became competent to kill the bacterium so that was a very interesting finding so then there must be something in that serum which is complementing the function of the antibodies which are still present in the anti serum so heat inactivation actually killed or destroyed some components or some protein components which are not the antibodies the antibodies could still survive the uh, heat treatment but those proteins were very uh, labile to the heat treatment so they were destroyed and upon addition of the fresh serum along with the anti serum again regained the bactericidal or the bacteriolytic activity so the the, the cells uh, the that uh, mixture of that inactivated anti serum and the fresh serum could actually lyse the bacterial cells or kill the bacterial cells so this was an interesting finding so then uh, he thought then there must be something in that fresh serum that is complementing for the inactive serum or the heat inactivated serum so the heat inactivated serum is supplying the antibodies which were not destroyed uh, due to the heat treatment but some other proteins which were serum components which were which are normally present in the serum they were destroyed now when you give this uh, anti sera uh, when you give this fresh serum those components come in and they can now together with the antibodies from that heat inactivated uh, anti sera they together can complement for this function and can lead to the uh, lysis and killing of the bacterium so this experiment clearly established that the serum contains some thing which or some protein components or some components which are very much uh, heat labile so they are susceptible to heat or sensitive to heat but their presence is important for the antibodies to work against the pathogen later on uh, some years later um, another scientist called uh, paul ehrlich er er so paul ehrlich uh, he actually later on worked on the same uh, same components and he coined the name for these components as the complement system or the complement proteins now what is this complement protein means that they can complement the function they can complement the function of the antibodies and the completes the function of the humoral branch of the immunity so that is the function of the complements so these complement proteins later were studied very well and uh, of course this uh, this person uh, you let uh, board it uh, he received uh, uh, nobel prize uh, in uh, physiology and medicine later on uh, 
And uh, this was very thoroughly studied uh, uh, later on and people found that there are at least 30 different types of complement proteins that are present in our system and they are circulating proteins. So, are, they are usually proteins or glycoproteins and uh, they circulate in our system all the time in the blood. So, they are always present in the blood, but they do not act. They only act when there is a pathogen present. So, they will act only in presence of a pathogen or in presence of an antigen antibody interaction. When there is an antigen antibody interaction, they can start acting. So, what do these complement proteins do and what they are actually? Before we go into the complement uh, activation pathways, so these complement proteins as I told, these complement proteins there are 30 different proteins and they move around in the, uh, they moves around in the blood. Mm, uh, so, let us say, so this is the in the bloodstream. So, there are these complement proteins which move around in the in the blood, but they are in inactive form. So, they are in an inactive form. So, they are not active. What happens is whenever there is activation of the complement system, whenever there is activation these proteins they start activating each other and this activation is primarily based on protease, protease activities. So, these are somehow these, these proteins um, they have proteolytic activities or protease activities. So, they can cleave each other and these proteins these complement proteins they are cleaved and uh, they get cleaved into a small subunit and a large unit. So, now these uh, small and the large uh, fractions that are the cleaved uh, fractions they are actually the active complement proteins and now they start to associate with other complement proteins right. So, they, once they, they are cleaved they get activated they find another target protein and then associates with that target protein and starts to activate another complement uh, uh, protein. So, this is a cascade the activation of the complement system is a cascade of events. It goes on as a cascade as a chain as a chain reaction one after the other and that activation leads to finally, a certain uh, uh, killing of the bacterium. So, now these proteins as I told they are moving around in the blood all the time in inactive form and then they are activated by the cleavage. Now, where do these proteins come from? All these proteins they usually come from the major uh, source of this protein is the liver and also to some extent from uh, the tissue macrophages and uh, to some extent from the um, epithelial cells of the GI tract and uh, some uh, these, these are uh, minimum sources. So, the maximum source that is where it comes from is the liver. Liver is the main source of this complement proteins. So, they come here and they go into the blood, they circulate in the blood and whenever there is uh, a signal um, uh, primarily from antigen antibody interactions, they get activated and once they are activated, they start cleaving each other. So, that is a very interesting phenomenon that they start to cleave each other and once they start to cleave each other, they generate active proteins or active proteases. Now, these proteases in turn cleaves other complement proteins and this cascade of event keeps going on and until there is killing of the bacterium and how it kills the bacterium we will come to that or how it kills the pathogen we will come to that. So, these complement proteins just uh, to understand uh, the nomenclature these complement proteins are named like starting from they are called like named like C1, C2, C3, C4 likewise and 
they are cleaved products. So, when, when they are cleaved like for example, when C 2 is cleaved it can give rise to C 2 A and C 2 B. Similarly, when C 3 is cleaved it can give rise to C 3 A and C 3 B. So, usually when they are cleaved the smaller fragment is denoted by this term A this is a smaller fragment. So, if we call this is a complement protein and it is cleaved like this. So, the smaller fragments are usually the uh, they are uh, designated by the A and the bigger they are designated by the B or the larger fragments they are designated by the B. So, that is an usual uh, con uh, convention. So, similarly they can be cleaved into different fragments and these fragments they can associate with each other and they can form new uh, enzyme complexes which can cleave further another target complement protein and this cascade of event keeps going on. So, likewise these complement proteins as I uh, described they are named like C for complement and uh, depending on their identification that like the C 1, C 2, C 3, C 4 they have been named like this and the cleavage products are named like C 2 A 2 B 3 A 3 B likewise. We will come across these uh, cleavage products and what do they do, uh, how do they work we will come uh, later on slowly slowly. So, <coughs> now what do these complement proteins do? So, what do the complement proteins do? They primarily do three types of functions. One, lysis of cells. So, what is lysis of cells? So, the complement proteins when after this cascade of events they can form a structure like this the a cylindrical structure like this which is also known as the membrane attack complex or the MAC. And this membrane attack complex on a target cell for example, let us say this is a target bacterium and on the surface of this target cell or on the cell membrane this MAC or the membrane attack complex is inserted like a cylinder. So, it's, it, it, it has a cylindrical structure like this and on the, sur on, the, on the cell surface or on the cell membrane they get inserted this they insert this uh, cylindrical structure and leading to formation of hole or pore on the membrane. Now, if you suppose if you are forming a hole on the membrane that means that would lead to an osmotic imbalance and that would lead to in rushing fluids. So, fluids will immediately come in and that would lead to swelling and the cells will finally burst. So, once there is an osmotic imbalance if you have a structure like this and that structure goes into the cell wall or the cell, or the cell membrane and creates a hole on the cell then there will be uh, fluids coming in there will be inrushing fluids very simple you are just uh, uh, making a small hole on the cell and this structure is formed at the end of the complement activation process. And this structure is also known as the membrane attack complex because it attacks the membrane and by that how the name comes from it is called the membrane attack complex which goes into the uh, cell membrane of the bacterium leading to the damage and leading to inrushing fluids and finally, the cell lyses it kills the cell. So, it lyses the cell and kills the cell. A second way the complement protein act is known as opsonization. If you remember 
we have used this term also in case of humoral immunity that is antibody mediated immunity. So, opsonization basically requires the antibodies. So, it is a combined effect of the complement proteins and the antibodies. So, opsonization primarily that means it helps or assists the phagocytes or the phagocytic cells like the macrophages for example, and other APCs. So, what happens is when there is antibodies they bind to the they bind to the target pathogen on the surface of the target pathogen and as we also studied earlier there are complement receptors. So, there are complement receptors on the uh, cell surface particularly this macrophage this kind of cells the phagocytic cells they express complement receptors on their surface and there are complement proteins as well. So, the complement proteins they coat the pathogen and are recognized by the complement receptors. When the pathogen is coated by the complement protein they are recognized by these complement receptors as well as assisted by the presence of the antibodies. So, there are antibodies which coats are or comes and interacts with the pathogen and as well as it is complemented by the cleavage products of these complement proteins. So, for example, one of the very important uh, complement cleavage products that mediates opsonization is C 3 B. So, they can coat the pathogen, they can coat the pathogen and can initiate the process of opsonization along with the or in presence of the antibodies. And a third process that these antibodies uh, that these complements can do is enhance inflammation. So, enhancing inflammation and this is primarily done by the smaller fragments of the cleavage product that is like the C 3 A, C 3 A, C 5 A. So, these are uh, the C 3 A and C 5 A. These are the major mediators of in enhancing inflammation. For example, uh, we discussed in our classes in the initial classes of uh, inflammation, innate immunity and inflammation, uh, we have discussed about the migration of the neutrophils for example. So, the neutrophils they can bind, they have on their surface they express these receptors which can bind to this C 3 A or C 5 A and they kind of act as chemoattractants like uh, we have described the chemokines as the chemoattractants. Similarly, these complement cleavage products particularly the smaller cleavage products they sometimes they also act as chemoattractants and they can also enhance inflammation and also they can do a second function that is the degranulation. So, they can also bind. So, these uh, granulocytes the mast cells they can express on their surface these receptors which can bind to this cleavage product of the complement or the complement protein cleavage products like C 3 A C 5 A and they can lead to degranulation of the mast cells. A degranulation uh, leads to the release of histamine. If you remember we have told in one of our initial classes uh, uh, regarding the release of histamine which actually leads to vasodilation and increasing vascular permeability. So, these are all uh, assisting or enhancing the process of inflammation. So, what does this complement proteins they finally do after they have been cleaved they finally do these main three things one is lysis cell lysis second is opsonization and third is enhance inflammation or inflammatory responses.
So, these are the three major functions that the complement proteins can do. Now, let us come to the different complement activation pathways. Now, what how these complements they get activated? So, we will be discussing about the complement. Now, we have to know the complement pathways. So, complement pathways means the pathways that means how these complement proteins they initiate the cascade of cleavage events. So, the complement pathways can primarily be of three types one the classical pathway secondly an alternative pathway and thirdly also known as the lectin pathway. So, these are the three major uh, pathways by which the complement activation occurs. The classical pathway as the name suggests, it was one of the very first pathways that was being identified and it is the major pathway or the major effector pathway for the humoral immunity. So, this is an antibody dependent pathway. So, it is an antibody dependent pathway. So, it depends on the antigen antibody interaction it will not be initiated the classical pathway will not be initiated if there is no antibody antigen interaction. The alternative pathway is an antibody independent pathway and the lectin pathway is also an antibody independent pathway. So, this is an antibody dependent pathway this is an antibody independent pathway and this is also an antibody independent pathway. So, a classical complement pathway usually is activated only when there is an antigen to antibody interaction and antigen to antibody interaction is initiated then only it starts to work. Now, <coughs> before we start understanding the different pathways of the complement activation what are the components of these systems? So, for example, the classical pathway mainly is initiated by the C1, the complement protein C1 and the other components that are involved are C2, C3, C4, 5 likewise. So, now the main component is the C1 and this component C1 is responsible for binding to the antibodies. The alternative pathway does not require the C1 or the C2. The alternative pathway as I told is an antibody independent pathway. So, it does not depend on the antibody antigen interaction. So, it starts only when there is C3 B present in the surrounding. It will start only in presence of C3 B. So, that means, C3 has to be broken into C3A and C3B. So, the alternative pathway can start in two ways. Either there is some spontaneous breakdown of the C3 into C3A and C3B. So, the C3 which breaks into the C3A and the 3B and if there is this 3B available then the alternative pathway will start. Alternatively, it can also start as a helper pathway for the classical activation. That means, when the classical pathway has already been initiated, then the alternative pathway can start as a signal amplification system. So, it can even amplify the whole thing and the lectin pathway is primarily activated by certain lectins that means, which binds to the carbohydrates and they are activated when uh, this kind of lectins like for example, MBL or mannose binding lectin, they can mannose binding lectin, they can bind to the carbohydrates 
the mannose moieties, the carbohydrate moieties on the surface of the pathogen. So, they recognizes the carbohydrates on the surface of the pathogen by this kind of lectins like mannose binding lectin, there is also phycoline. So, these are the components of the lectin pathway, which is also an antigen or uh, antibody independent pathway. It starts primarily by recognition of the carbohydrates uh, or which are present on the surface of the pathogen or the bacteria. And the components are pretty much similar to that what we see in case of the classical pathway. So, it also contains the C2, the C4, the C3 and the C5. And in this case, in case of the alternative pathway, we have two factors which are also actually complement protein, they are named like factors, factor B and factor D. So, these are the components of the alternative pathway. So, the classical pathway comprises of the complement protein C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 mostly. Then the alternative pathway comprises it starts from the C3 only the C3B and it has the factor B and the factor D and the lectin pathway it is dependent on the binding of these lectins the MBL or the phycoline which can bind to the carbohydrates or the uh, that are present on the surface of the pathogen and they also have these complement proteins like C2, C3, C4, C5. Now, all these complement pathways we will see in our next, next, next lecture we will see how these all these complement pathways they converge and the main objective of this complement pathway kind of the central part of the complement pathway is the complement protein C3, all their efforts are towards breaking down the C3 into C3A and C3B because you need C3B. One of the major components that you need for the opsonization process or the membrane attack complex formation, they are the C3B and the C5B. So, C3B is one of the central components, you need a lot of C3B. So, you need to break down the C3 into 3A and 3B and that is the central part of the complement system. So, all these pathways be it the classical or the alternative or the lectin pathway they converge at a point and they all try to break down the C3 into 3A and 3B that is the main objective. And for that these cleaved products of this complement system they try to associate with each other and form a complex which also is described as a C3 convertase. So, their objective is to form a C3 convertase and a C3 convertase basically converts C3 into 3A and 3B. So, we will see in our next lecture how this complement pathways they try to produce this C3 convertase and how this C3 convertase is actually breaking down C3 into C3A and C3B. So, this uh, will uh, we will discuss more in details in our next lecture. Thank you.